لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله يغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أحسن الكلام كلام الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وصيكم ونفسي بتقوى الله سبحانه وتعالى ومراقبته في السر والعالم في النار سبحانه وتعالى رأس الأمر كله Dear brothers and sisters in Islam How many of us have different kind of problems? How many of us have problems at work? How many of us have problems with our spouses? How many of us lost loved ones? How many of us are sick or have health issues, have terminal illness or short period of time of sickness? Each one of us will have experienced one of the above or all combined. Today I would like to share with you some of the ideas of, of how to address this in the Quran. In, in the Quran. In preparing for today's khutbah, I kept going around in circles trying to draw a thread that connects everything together into one thing. And I kept going back and forth and back and forth. Inshallah, I mean, with the help of Allah, at the end of the khutbah, we'll try to connect all this together. And we'll start with the best of, of everything with the Quran. In Surah Al-Kahf, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem, فَوَجَدَ عَبْدًا مِنْ عِبَادِنَا آتَيْنَاهُ رَحْمَةً مِنْ عِنْدِنَا وَعَلَّمْنَاهُ مِنْ لَدُنَّا عِلْمًا قال له موسى هل أتبعك على أن تعلمني مما علمت رجدا قال إنك لن تستطيع معي صبرا وكيف تصبر على ما لم تحد به خبرا قال ستجدني إن شاء الله صابرا ولا أعصي لك أمرا قال فإن تبعتني فلا تسألني عن شيء حتى أحدث لك منه ذكر We all hopefully have read this today This is the story of موسى and الخبر We all know the story but the Qur'an is not just to say stories. There's a specific purpose for every single word that's mentioned in the Qur'an. The verses that I just mentioned describes the initial part of Sayyidina Musa going to Al-Khidr and meeting with him and starting to get into the process of, of a learning experience that he's going to witness. So we're going to go to the stories one by one. Story one. فَانْتَلَقَ حَتَّى إِذَا رَكِبَ فِي السَّفِينَ خَرَقَهَا the first story, they went into a boat. And Al-Khidr poked a hole in the boat. So Sayyidina Musa asked him, Are you doing this to sink the boat? And you have done something evil. What did Khidr respond back? Didn't I tell you you won't be able to withstand what's going to happen? So this was story one. The second one, فَانْتَلَقَ حَتَّى إِذَا لَقِيَ غُلَامًا فَقَتَلَهُ قَالَ قَتَلْتَ نَفْسًا زَكِيَةً بَغَيْرِ نَفْسٍ لَقَدْ جِئْتَ شَيْئًا نُكْرًا The second story, they went together, انطلقا, they go, there's a path, they, do, they, they travel to it, and he finds غلام, a young boy, and Al-Khidr kills him. Sayyidina Musa tells him, you have done something awful. And again, the same response happened. You do not understand why these things happen, so don't question this. Then goes to story three. And we know the story. They went to a village, and the, this, there was a, a, a wall that was about to fall. They asked the people in the village to give them food and sustenance. They, this, they didn't allow them to do that. He went ahead to Khidr and built that wall. In each of these stories, subhanAllah, remember the first question I said in the beginning? In each of these stories, it touches on one aspect. One, about sustenance. You lost your job, or there was a hole in the boat, so you'd think that I lost my job. The only thing that gives me sustenance is this, and now I lost it. The second one, you lose a loved one. 
not knowing what's going on, we just see the outside of it. And the third one, you do a good deed where you do it to people that you, you don't think you should do it to them because of what they do. So each story, at the end, of, after each story, every time Al Khidr tells Musa, you don't know what you're doing. You don't know what you're doing. And at the end he told him, that's it. You've strike three, you're not going to continue with me anymore. Let me explain to you what happened in each story. Now, how many times has this happened to us? Something bad that happens to us, we don't have an explanation to. But we flip, we do the same exact thing that Sayyidina Musa did. Why? Because we're human. But now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran brings al-Khidr to explain to us that our certain things are within our understanding and others, no matter what we do with our limited knowledge, we won't understand. The first one he describes, Amma Safina, the boat, was for poor people. And there was a king that every time he sees a, 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 a strong boat, he would take it. So he did it to maintain, so these people can stay have to have their boats. The story about the boy, that boy was going to turn out to be a tyrant. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, having mercy on the parents, he got to, um, killed that boy. And the last one about the, the, the two uh, um, um, orphans, their dad was a pious person to protect their wealth. And remember what happened to the people there? What does that tell you? They went to ask for the people for food, and they said, no, they're stingy. So if that wall had fallen, wouldn't they have taken the, the money for these kids? So there was a reason why he built that wall back. Now in every single verse, if we read this, I think it's about close to 10 ayat, and seven times it mentions the word sabr in one form or the other. We're getting closer to the topic of today's khutbah. It relates to sabr, but it's not specifically for sabr. So I'll mention this ayah first. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا استعينوا بالصبر والصلاة أجان صبر إن الله مع الصابرين أجان صابرين ولا تقولوا لمن يقتل في سبيل الله أموات بل أحياء ولكن لا تشعرون وذا نبلونكم بشيء من الخوف والجوع ونقص من الأموال والأنفس والثمرات وبشر الصابرين Now listen to this الذين إذا أصابتهم مصيبة قالوا إنا لله وإنا إليه راجعون it's all leading to this. All these things happen. Now, we get emails every other day, inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. When do we hear this? When someone dies. Do you hear when someone loses their job? Do you hear when someone hurts themselves? Do you hear when someone gets sick? Our limited knowledge took the word inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un only where people die. What does the Quran teach us here? وَلَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِنَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْجُوعِ وَنَقْصِ مِنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَنفُسِ وَالثَّمَرَاتِ Anything that happens, what do we say? الَّذِينَ إِذَا أَصَابَتْهُمْ مُصِيبَةً قَالُوا إِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ رَاجَعُونَ That's the underline. Now a lot of us misunderstand the word musiba. When we say musiba, what does that mean in Egyptian? That's a calamity. That's a big problem. Something happened, happened. Something bad happened, right? Linguistically, this has changed, by the way. Linguistically, musiba comes from what? Asaba. What is asaba? To aim at something and get it exactly. So you're aiming at something and you're trying to... The target. You know the target sign? That's what you're trying to get to. That's musiba. So musiba is not something that happens by accident. It's a specific incident that happened to you at a specific time. If it's meant to happen at that time, it will happen at that time. And it's a lot of, unfortunately, when it comes to, to most of us, when we get a calamity, if the iman is not clear, what happens? Why me? Don't you hear that from a lot of people? Why me? Or, if it's not happening to you, why him? He's a good guy. He prays, he does this, he does that. Why him? There's other people that are doing rampant things all over the place and nothing's happening to them. Well, we don't get to pick and choose. The thing is, musiba or something, an incident that happens to you, to me, to anybody else, we don't pick and choose. But there is one requirement. الَّذِينَ عَلِذَا أَصَابَتْهُمْ مُصِيبَةً What does Allah say here? 
قالوا إن الله وإن الله راجعون what does قالوا mean said they said but does it say فقالوا because how many of us would have an incident you would lose your job you get fired what happens you blow up and then he said Alhamdulillah قدر الله ما زفع but you blew up what did he say here فإذا أصابتهم مصيبة the one incident قالوا immediately you say إن الله يرجعون if I hold something in my hand and throw it at you would you just sit there and wait until it hits you and then you stop moving you don't it's an immediate response وَالَّذِينَ إِذَا أَصَابَتْهُمْ مُصِيبَةً قَالُوا إِنَّ اللَّهِ وَإِنَّ اللَّهِ رَاجِعُونَ So it's an immediate response. So this reflex reaction doesn't happen overnight. If you ask any of the people to play sports, do they play sports out of, without practice? I was just hearing it today. Even uh, um, Tiger Woods, when he, he gets golf lessons. Anybody that plays something or does something, he has to continuously practice it. It doesn't happen overnight. In the second part of the khutbah, inshallah, we're going to talk about this and it, update and try to fix our responses to certain things. And it all deals with sabr, but sabr is part of it. May Allah bless you and me with the ability to implement the Holy Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet I say this and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us forgiveness. So today's khutbah is a reminder of something that we already know. We know that when incidents happen, we have to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And remember how many times we mentioned the word sabr in the previous ayat. Now, each one of us would ask himself, do I question Allah's actions every time something happens? Or do I take it as this and say, alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen? Remember the ayat, and this is very important. الَّذِينَ إِذَا أَصَابَتْهُمْ مُصِيبًا Musiba is one. So it's one item, one incident that would happen to you. So your car broke down in the morning. I'm going to lose my meeting. I'm going to do this. Recently I heard the story about someone that got so upset that he missed his flight. One of those flights that would happen to them. It was one of the important flights that he had to go to a place to get, sign a big deal. That flight tanked. But in his head... The appearance, he lost an important meeting. If he had gone on the flight, what would happen to him? Everything would have been gone. He would have been gone. But it was not meant for him to go. So, as I mentioned in the beginning, I'm trying to tie this all into one thing. And in my humble opinion, to get to that immediate response, it, we talked about sabr and how many times it was mentioned there. But how do we attain sabr? In my humble opinion, Rida Billah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Having satisfaction of anything and everything you have. If you have Rida, everything wouldn't matter at that point. And I'm not just saying this because I, I, I made it up. The, from the preparation and the following uh, hadith I'm going to mention, it's clear. Rida would help you get sabr. If you don't have rida, you won't have sabr. You won't understand what you have sabr. The hadith goes, Ya Aba Sa'id, Man radiya billahi rabba wa islami dina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam nabiyya, wajabat lahu al-janna. This is one hadith. The second hadith, there's multiple of them. Imam an abd al-Muslim, yaqul hina yusbih wa hina yumsi, thalath marrat. Raditu billahi rabba wa islami dina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam nabiyya, إِلَّا كَانَ حَقًا عَلَى اللَّهِ أَنْ يُرْضِيَهُ You say, رَضِيتُ بِاللَّهِ رَبَّهُ وَبِالْإِسْلَامِ دِينَ مُحَمَّنْ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَمْ نَبِيَّهُ وَرَسُولَهُ If you say this three times every day, in the morning and the afternoon. You know what that's called? It's called positive affirmation. Does anybody know what a positive affirmation is? Positive affirmation, you repeat things, in psychology they will repeat things multiple times, until your subconscious, that becomes a reality. So you keep repeating it. The Prophet ﷺ, 1400 years ago, told us to do this. So repeat, say, رَضِيتُ بِاللَّهِ رَبَّ وَبِالْإِسْلَامِ دِينَ مُحَمَّدْ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمَ وَرَسُولَهُ وَرَسُولَهُ Three times in the morning, three times in the afternoon. Eventually it will sink in. Eventually it will sink in. 
And when it sinks in, your response will be immediate. At that point, it will be an immediate response. To recap, inshallah, Rabbil Alameen, we need to have sabr to incidents that happen. And that's, we all say this. But unfortunately, each one of us knows their capacity. And remember the last incident you had. What was your response? How did you respond? If your response was, inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un, we are to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to Him we're going to return, then inshallah, Rabbil Alameen, you're in good shape. If that was not your response, and you responded with anger, or you let out on someone or something, or, or you did a different kind of reaction, then start questioning, what do I need to do? And as a practical application to today's khutbah, one thing that I'm asking, say it in the morning and the afternoon, similar to what the Prophet said. If you don't say it, start saying, inshallah, going forward. May Allah accept from all of us, inshallah, Rabbil Alameen, and forget our shortcoming. قُلْ يَا عِبَدِ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسُهُمْ لَا تَخْنَتُمْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَغْفِرُ الدُّنُوبَ جَمِيعًا إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ Allah minna ka khudu khaluq al-haq Inna Allah wa laikudu salluna ala nabiyya Ayyu al-lazina amanu Sallu alayhi wa sallimu tasliman kathira Allah wa salli wa sallim wa barik ala muhammad Wa ala alihi muhammad kama sallit ala ibrahim wa ala ibrahim Allah mahdina fi man hadayt Wa afina fi man afayt Wa tawallana fi man tawallayt Wa barik lana fi ma aatayt Wa qina wa asrif anna sharra ma qadayt Fa inna ka taqdi wa la yuqda alayk Inna hu la yadillu man wa alayt Wa la yadillu man aadayt Tabarakta rabbana wa ta'alayt Nastaghfiruk Allahumma min junub Min adhunub wal khataya wa natubu ilayk اللهم اغفر لنا ذنوبنا وإسرافنا في أمرنا اللهم ارحم موتانا وموتى المسلمين واشف مرضانا ومرضى المسلمين اللهم اهدنا واهد بنا واهد على يدينا واجعلنا من المهديين اللهم استرنا فوق الأرض وتحت الأرض ويوم العرض عليك اللهم صبرنا اللهم ردنا اللهم ردنا اللهم تب علينا واغفر لنا ذنوبنا وإسرافنا في أمرنا وآخر دعواهم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى صحبه وسلم وأقم الصلاة